so I had it. Uh, give it up for his heart. Uh. <laughs> it really is great to be here tonight. How many of you are here tonight? Raise your hands. Yeah. I love asking it because you guys looked around. It's like, okay, yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, man. How many of you, this is probably only the eighth time I'm going to tell you to raise your hands. How many of you have ever heard the phrase, you can be anything you want to be? Have you heard that? What a crock that turned out to be. <laughs> I wanted to play in the NBA. Turns out I'm short, I'm slow, and I don't jump well. <laughs> Not a good resume. My best friend in junior high goes, dude, I'm gonna be a model. I said, dude, you're ugly. <laughs> I actually had the privilege a few years ago to do an event with the NBA. I actually met Shaquille O'Neal, guy's huge, and I literally walked out, started dying laughing. My friend said, what is so funny? I said, what if they told Shaq that? You can be anything you want to be. No, he can't. What if Shaquille O'Neal's dream in life is to be a professional horse jockey? <laughs> poor horses. I mean, think about it. We can't be whatever we want to be. Tell me your name real quick. I won't embarrass you. Brian, what do you do, Brian? A programmer analyst. See, you are not a kid sitting there going, oh, the computer, I love analyzing this. I want to be this one day, were you? You didn't do it, did you? No. See, it's nothing work. Tell your name. Rich. rich. What do you do, Rich? Actuary. You're an actuary. <laughs> you didn't dream of that as a kid, did you? Please say no. <laughs> actuary. I just love to analyze numbers a lot. If, for those of you who don't know what an actuary is, it's basically an accountant without quite as much personality. Okay, that's basically an actuary. No, I'm just kidding. I'm gonna give you a chance to, to, to just give it back to me. If you could do anything and get paid for it, what would you wanna do? Anything and get paid. An astronaut. That's kind of a cool job. That's a good job. Way out there, but it's a cool job. Let me have one of the women here. If you could do anything and get paid for it, what would you do? Doctor. A doctor? See, you guys are coming up with like really noble things. I'm thinking about like, I get paid to fill in the blank. Well, I get paid to play linebacker. play linebacker. You'd be an athlete. See, that's still like a real job though. Just sit around. I would get paid to nothing. nothing. See, that's what I'm going for. <laughs> Leave me alone, man. I'm, I'm working overtime. <laughs> See, that. That would be cool. How many of you ladies would like to get paid to shop? Clap your hand. Yeah. My, my favorite ever was sleep. Love that. The alarm goes off, pulling a double shift. I, just, I would love that. There's a lot of jobs to choose from. There's a lot of jobs I would not want to have. Now, how many of you, raise your hands, have ever in your life worked fast food of any kind? Raise your hand. Right on. These are my people. Yes. <laughs> it amazes me the hard time people give fast food workers. I was on the road a few weeks ago. This guy's reaming this poor little girl behind the counter. I said, no, pick up on the service. You take it back. Don't you take the pills like you give me the service. I wanted to go, dude, she's making $3 a day. Okay? It's just... You know, you paid $2, you got food in a bag. Be happy. <laughs> but I didn't say anything. You want to know why I didn't say anything? Because I used to work fast food. And I don't know what was on there when it went behind the counter, but he's not going to want what's on there when it comes back. <laughs> Just a warning. And then there's some jobs I couldn't do. And do they have road construction here? Yeah. <laughs> These guys make like 10 to 15 bucks an hour. They're on the each end of residential road construction with that sign. They sit there for 10 hours. Stop. <laughs> Slow. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Slow. <laughs> See, I couldn't do that job because after about an hour, I would start messing with people. <laughs> stop, slow, stop, slow, stop! Stop! stop. 
These guys wear hard hats. I'm not sure why. <laughs> I saw one job that I would love to do. If I ever couldn't do stand-up, I would love this job. I'm on tour in Phoenix, Arizona. In Phoenix, Arizona, a guy picks me up with a convertible. We're riding over the Camelback Mountains. I said, this is so cool. I said, what do you do when it rains? He says, it only rains twice a year. I take my other car. I said, that is so cool. That night I performed. I went back to my hotel. I'm flipping through the channels. I come to the news. And on the news in Phoenix, Arizona, where it rains twice a year, they actually have a weatherman. <laughs> Let's go to Ken in the Weather Center. <laughs> Looking at the map here, notice we live in a desert. <laughs> go out on a limb and say it's gonna be hot tomorrow. <laughs> let's, let's take a look at the five month forecast. <laughs> I was thinking. <laughs> Tell you the ultimate job I could not do though, I could not be a flight attendant. I flew 230 flights last year. I love flight attendants. Greatest people going. Could not do that job. One day of having to stand by that door and having to go, okay, Baba, okay, Baba, okay, stay, okay, okay, Baba, get off the plane! It's one door, it's the same one you came in. The part I really couldn't do was that that announcement that they were required by FAA law to do every flight to fasten your seat up, descend into the center, to release, pull up on that. I'm telling you, I would snap. Direct your attention to Ken. He's going to show you how to fasten your seatbelt. Okay, to fasten. You. Okay, to fasten. If we happen to be in a crash and you cannot figure this out, you deserve to die. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry. And if we lose cabin pressure and there's a bright yellow oxygen mask swinging in front of your face and you cannot figure out, breathe. Your DNA does not need to be passed on. I'm Because there's too many choices in life. There's way too many choices in life, aren't there? I think the reason we struggle is we got more choices than any generation in the history of the world. If you doubt that, just let me ask you this. When's the last time you sat in front of your TV with a remote control and went through 99 channels and there was nothing on worth watching? They're trying to come up with reality TV. That's the biggest oxymoron I've ever heard of. <laughs> reality TV. They started out with a show called The Real World. Do you remember that one? It's actually in a remake now on MTV. This is how old I am. I remember when MTV showed music on it. <laughs> yeah. The Real World, where four guys, four girls, lived in a rent-free apartment on the beach with no responsibility. Where is that, The Real World? <laughs> I did not see one box of ramen noodles in that entire part. <laughs> that would be real. So they're trying to make it more real. They started a show called Fear Factor. You seen that one? Where you do insane things and eat bugs and just like, it's a double dog dare constantly. That is based on reality. It's based on junior high school, okay? <laughs> <laughs> then they got the one where they got the two tribes. And everybody's so excited, let's work as a team, and we're a team, and then until you walk away and then everybody stabs you in the back. Do you know that one? Yeah, that's based on high school, okay? <laughs> and then there's my wife's favorite. I do not get this show, The Bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just say this, guys, if you are sitting on your couch, waiting for a limousine to pull up to your house with 25 hot, intelligent, incredible women that are all in love with you, you can make out with all of them, and none of them care. <laughs> it's not real. <laughs> it 
We have useless choices. Everywhere there are useless choices. I've got two little boys. The other day I'm at the grocery store. They go like, Daddy, can I have this? Can I have this? I looked at it. A little tube of candy. Been out about two years now. I looked at it. Mini M&Ms. Have you seen these? Why? Why did we need that choice? I mean, were people eating the regular ones going, <clears throat> oh, dang, I can't finish a whole one. <laughs> I wish they'd make these smaller. <laughs> How many of you use deodorant on a regular basis? <laughs> I was about to get frustrated. I went to get deodorant. My, my whole reason for using deodorant, don't want to sweat and stink. That's it. I ended up, I couldn't find my, I'm looking and I'm like, I can't find my, I ended up counting 52 different kinds of deodorant. 52 kinds. I'm about to get mad because I can't find mine when this girl and boyfriend walk up. And I kind of backed off. She goes, oh, here's your kind, here's your kind. And he's like, I don't, I don't like that kind no more. <laughs> to which she replied, I almost laughed out loud. She goes, oh, try a different flavor. <laughs> I stood back to wait. I wanted to see her gone. <laughs> So I figured, what the heck, I'll see if there's anything to this. I bought my two favorite kinds, Alpine and Ocean Mist. <laughs> Next day, I'm flying to California to do a gig, and I figure, what the heck, I put Alpine under one arm and Ocean Mist under the other. Totally forgot about it. I get to California, get to my hotel, get in the elevator. This guy looks like he just walked off the beach. He gets in with me. We start going up. After about two floors, he starts going, whoa. <laughs> I like, dude, are you okay? And he's like, dude. I said, are you all right? And he's like, man, I don't, I don't know why, but I got the sudden urge to go surfing on a pine tree and I can't figure it out. <laughs> Too many useless choices. We've got so many choices that it, it just mind boggling how much it just bogs us down, doesn't it? How many of you have been to the video store with a friend or a family member and gone through the entire store going, you want to see this? No, I've seen that, I've seen that. You wander around for at least two hours. You end up renting a video neither one of you want to watch. By the time you get home, it's too late to watch the whole thing. You spend a couple days, you end up returning the video late that you didn't want to see in the first place. The only thing worse than that is I guarantee you within the last month you've been in a car and you've had the conversation. So where do you want to eat? I don't know. Where do you want to eat? I don't care. What do you feel like? It doesn't matter to me. What do you want? I don't care. What do you feel like? How about pizza? No, I, I thought I heard that yesterday. I thought you said it didn't matter. <laughs> Drive around for days. Now my wife and I, we just get in the car whether we're hungry or not because by the time we decide, we will be hungry. <laughs> You finally decide on a restaurant, and there's more choices. You go in, would you like a table or booth? Smoking or non-smoking? They give you a whole menu full of choices. It drives me crazy. There's one choice I know most people don't have to make. What would you like to drink? Most people have a favorite drink. My favorite drink is sweet iced tea, okay? I love, yes, are there some, yes. More of my people, yes. See, but outside the South, you cannot get sweet iced tea. If you ask for sweet iced tea, they will very politely, condescendingly say, well, it's all unsweet, but there's sugar on the table. I'm like, yeah, and there's a moon in the sky. Because if you drink sweet tea, you know that sugar does not dissolve in cold tea. It's like a snow globe, you put it in. It's like drinking unsweet tea until that last sip, and it's like, oh! <laughs> oh you can feel your blood get thicker. It's just, oh. So I, outside this, I still drink sweet tea, and, and if it's unsweet, I use the little packets. I started using the pink ones. I had a friend go, oh, you know that, that causes cancer in lab rats. I said, do, you, do I look like a rodent to you? <laughs> 
So I started using the blue ones. And another friend go, oh, you know that kills brain cells and causes short-term memory loss. You wanna know what I do now? I use one of each. <laughs> Somebody starts to say something, I go, hey, if I get cancer, I don't wanna know about it, all right? <laughs> Too many choices. Life can really be confusing. They're probably one of the most confusing parts of religions and philosophies. I took philosophy in college. That was confusing. The whole, if, how do you know I'm here? Well, I, you're here. That's the first indication. <laughs> and then I got to thinking more, more religious in nature, and I got to thinking, you know what? There's a lot of confusing philosophies. I love the popular one, but if you think about any of these for this long, they get really confusing really fast. Like, I like the one that says, well, we're all just on different roads and we're going to the same place. <laughs> now that sounds really good until you think about it this long. And if you really believe that tonight, when you go home, just get on any road. <laughs> You'll end up home. I don't think so. I fly out of Atlanta International Airport. Next time you get on an airplane there, just get on any airplane. <laughs> And then there's the one I really believed for a long time was the whole good, bad thing. Somebody says, you know, if you stand before God and he asks, why should I let you in? What are you going to say? And I'm like, oh, I, you know, I never killed anybody and I, I hope I'm good enough. And that sounds really good until you think about it this long. Then you got to ask the question, well, who decides what's good and what's bad? Who gets to decide that? Is it a bell curve? Are half of us going to be good and half of us going to be bad? <laughs> if that's the way it is, shouldn't we be out there trying to make good people do bad stuff so we got a better chance? <laughs> Or, or would that be bad? <laughs> Get that. And here's the real bummer. What if it was the whole good, bad thing and we're standing there and God puts it on this huge scale and we can't go back and <laughs> we miss by one. <laughs> Dang, if I just didn't cuss in third grade, I would be in. <laughs> that would be a bummer. See, churches can be confusing too. I think I, I, I did not like going to church when I was a kid because I think the main reason was the pastor of the church my parents went to was like 114 years old, okay? <laughs> Go behind this pulpit, you could see about that much of his head. <laughs> and he would stand up there for like an hour, just. <laughs> I'd take the bulletin things they give you when you come in and those little church golf pencils. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Only places you can find them, churches and golf courses. <laughs> and that would draw, and about every three minutes I'd go, is it time to go, is it time to go? My mother would be like, shh, you gotta be quiet. And I'd draw, I was like, is it time to go? I filled up the whole page. Have you ever gotten to that point where you filled up every ounce of every place to where you started filling in all the letters with the openings? Have you ever gotten that far? It's like, like Morris code by the time you get done. I, it was about the 10th time I said, is it time to go? And my dad, my dad had like eight foot long arms. He reached around my mom. He grabbed the paper and a pencil. He said, sit there. That vein in the middle of his head popped out. <laughs> so I'm sitting there just bored out of my mind. The pastor's still up front. <laughs> I do not know why I did this. At eight years old, you do some stupid things. From the back of my mind, my memory brought to thought my friend Ricky that week taught me, you can make yourself burp. <laughs> I'm sitting in the middle of church. <laughs> I know that God has got a sense of humor, okay? <laughs> Cause in the church it was half asleep, the other half bored to tears. The pastor's up front. In that instant, this sugar coke donut thing found the fake one in the middle and said, let's go. <laughs> you could hear a pin drop that's like, Bark! <laughs> you 
you know how you can look around like, well, maybe nobody heard that. <laughs> Felt a hand on the back of my head picking me up. <laughs> Actually, I had the nerve to look up at my dad. I said, is it time to go? <laughs> the worst spanking of my life. And churches, I think sometimes, I, I love my church, I really do, but I think sometimes churches get so religious they don't even know what they're talking about. I was on tour in Florida, this very well-meaning church came on the radio and they're using all these big, huge religious words. Come to our church, we're ratified, we're sanctified, we're justified, blah, 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 blah. And I don't even think they realize they said this. They actually said in their commercial, come to our church where we believe in sharing tongues. <laughs> Sorry, I don't, I don't know if or where you go to church, okay? When I go to church, don't want to share my tongue with anybody. This, this bizarre mental picture of ushers at the door going, welcome to our service. Oh, no. You know those marquee signs they have out in front of the churches? I want it so bad to call them and just tell them, I got a great idea for your marquee. Please brush and floss before all services. I mean, they're gonna do it. Oh. And I need help. I really do, because life has got a lot of choices and confusing, and, and I wish I could just have a sign. Just give me a sign. Make life easy. I wish there were signs, but there's not signs for the things we need signs for. I'm driving down the interstate the other day. You know that slanted area in the middle that's kind of gravelly? There's a sign there, do not drive on median. <laughs> Can somebody tell me who's in the fast lane going, I bet that slanted gravel area is much quicker. Let's try that. <laughs> I don't think so. But there's a committee somewhere deciding what goes on signs because they're dumbing them down. They are. Used to be a sign called Deer Crossing. You remember that one? Then they tried to get in on the whole Christmas thing. It's now deer Xing. <laughs> and that was too difficult, so now it's just a deer. <laughs> I had the DJ of the radio tell me, so this guy's wife actually hit a deer. And her comment was, I never thought they would come from the other direction. <laughs> really gets me is that of all the signs they could make simpler, bump. <laughs> bump. <laughs> bump. But no, they spell that one out. And I just got to be thinking, I would love to be in a car with a foreign driver sometime, pulling up on that. Oh, I wonder what these words mean. <laughs> I think this word mean bump. <laughs> and what really gets me, I had a friend tell me they spend $600 making those signs. Another $600 to pay a crew to go out and put it up. Here's the concept, why not take the $1,200 and fix the bump? <laughs> That's an idea. And then I was thinking the other day, I did a TV interview and, and I'm sitting there at the TV interview just kind of like this and the, the lady on Good Morning Jacksonville, she says, you know, that's an insult in some countries. I said, what is? She goes, showing the bottom of your foot, an insult. And so I said, that would never work in our country. Can you imagine driving down the interstate? Hey! <laughs> And then they're trying to make them more simple. Have you, do you remember the old sign, slow children playing? Do you remember that one? Yeah, all the parents of the slow kids got ticked off about that one. So they changed that one. And instead of having little stick people running, do you know what they came up with for children playing? Does anybody know? A seesaw. When did that interfere with driving? 
there's these poor foreign drivers going, oh Lord, they're launching children into the road. And then my favorite of all time, in Georgia, it's a little bit different. I, th I saw one in Ohio, but in Georgia, like every fifth sign on the bottom, they put these signs, minimum speed, 40 miles an hour. Have you seen these signs? Who are these for? <laughs> Have you ever been in a vehicle with somebody going, hey man, you seen any cops? <laughs> I'm doing 35, woo! Uh, I tell you, the one place I need, I need a sign, is with my wife. My wife is, is a beautiful, wonderful woman, but she's a little, I mean, literally 4.0 student through college, but she misses, she misses some of the simplest things in life. And she will say, I knew she had this condition before we got married, so I married her knowing this, okay? But she mixes up phrases all the time. We were dating, and we went for a run one day, we got home, she goes, woo! I am sweating like a bullet. <laughs> Honey, I don't think bullets sweat. She said, no, it's a saying. <laughs> don't think that's it. She used to be a teacher telling me about how teachers were gonna get in trouble for something they did. She said, Monday morning, the fan is gonna hit the roof. <laughs> she had been worried about this one area of her life and and she, I told her, you gotta let this go. You gotta, get, you gotta, gotta let this go. She goes, oh, do you think I'm just dragging a dead dog into the ground? <laughs> but the th I, I, we had to quit calling, we used to call them Heather isms. Now we just call them isms because I started hearing people all over the place say these. And I heard this guy the other day, he says, quit running around like a chicken with a bad haircut. <laughs> Not cutting off their heads anymore, just giving them mohawks. <laughs> this guy told me from Arkansas, he says, every week his boss starts out the meeting of the organization the same way. Okay, guys, the reason we have this meeting is to make sure we got all our ducks on the same page. <laughs> what? And a buddy of mine, his wife called me and she goes, oh, you're gonna love this one. I said, How, did you have a good night last night? He said, I slept like a bird. <laughs> I've heard of sleep like a baby, but if you sleep like a bird, do you, is there a telephone pole involved? I mean, how does that work? <laughs> and then I love this one. This, this woman was a little bit ticked off about something. She goes, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but that doesn't make it right. <laughs> golf with a buddy of mine and he's talking about his college days he goes whoo I got a lot of black sheep in my closet <laughs> does your wife know about this <laughs> are the sheep eating the skeletons at some point in time oh and it goes on and on and on and people are confused life is confusing it makes no sense to me a lot of times I went to college and I saw something I'd never seen before I thought, this, this makes no sense to me at all. In college, I saw for the first time in person, they have them here at your college. Guy cheerleaders. They've got them here. I looked and I'm like, what a bunch of dorks. <laughs> then I got to look and these are like really big guys. Then I met a few of them, found out they're former football players. Blew out a knee, now they're college cheerleaders. I thought, think about that choice. You rehab your knee. Six, eight, 12 months. You come back. Now you have a choice. You can wrestle around with fat, sweaty, ugly, stinking guys who want to cripple you for life. Or you can hang out with the cutest girls on campus. Grab them by the behind. Hold them over your head. <laughs> Think I'm going to be a cheerleader, okay? That's not a tough choice. If you ever meet one, you've got to ask them this question. I think they go through it the first day of guy cheerleader camp. 
I met some, I said, man, I don't mean to be rude or gross, but what is it like grabbing girls by the butt and holding them over your head? What is that like? If you ever ask one, they will all say the exact same thing. Well, you don't really realize that's what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. I can see drinking a Coke going, oh, I thought that was a Pepsi, okay? I'll buy that. But I'm not buying that today. Hey, great game, all right. Hey, what are you doing up there? like you can get in line at the grocery store. Ha, oh, excuse me. I'm a former college cheerleader. Didn't realize I just did that. You know? <laughs> it's just too much. I have children. How many of you have children? Right on. All right. Not how many of you are children. How many have children? All right. Oh, I got two little boys. And I don't know if you had to go through the class and see the video. I'm not going there. I'm just telling you that the, the best part was not there. They never showed the part after that happened. My wife went through 27 hours of labor, okay? Yeah, I know, I was exhausted. So, <laughs> but they took our baby and they, ta they take your child and immediately put them under a french fry lamp, okay? <laughs> and they clean off all the baby stuff. And then they take a blanket and fold your child into a burrito. <laughs> <laughs> I went to show off my little burrito and the nurses were leaving. I said, where are you going? I said, you'll be fine. I said, no, I won't. I said, you'll figure it out. I said, no, I won't. I said, three reasons a baby cries. They're tired. They're hungry. Got something in their pants. <laughs> that night I told my wife, you need a rest. You're tired. You've got to rest. Sure enough, three in the morning, I'm sleeping sideways in this chair. Little light from the hallway. Graham starts to scream. I run over, I'm like, it's okay, it's okay, baby. So I go through the list, okay, he's tired. If he's tired, he'd be sleeping. Um, hungry, okay, he just ate. I leaned over, whoa! It's that pants thing. I'd never changed the diaper in my life, but I want to be a good husband, so I'm sitting there going, holy, I use two complete boxes of those moist towel things. Whoa! Somebody snuck in and poured tar into that first diaper. I mean, I'm sitting here going, tar. <laughs> Finally get the bad diaper. I take the bad diaper, put it over where bad diapers go. I'm feeling around in the dark for the good diapers. Good diaper. Right as I got the good diaper, in the quietness of that room, I heard a whooshing noise. <laughs> I saw something that is physically impossible, okay? My son, 21 inches long, eight and a half pounds, is peeing into the hallway, okay? <laughs> Holy cow! My first thought was, oh my goodness. My second thought was, that's my boy. We have two little boys, five and six. We have a little girl who's 11 weeks old and is just, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Our first little girl. Little girls are different. We're gonna have to take her back. She leaks. I do not understand this. I went to change her diaper the other day. She was wet here. Do women have an opening here I'm not aware of? That blew my mind. I love the questions people ask when you're expecting. So, are you gonna find out? Are you gonna find out what it is? Eventually, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't everybody? You just imagine a wife going, oh, 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 Miss Kingdon, look, don't tell me, don't tell me. We're not gonna find out. <laughs> We're gonna raise it gender neutral. <laughs> Name it Pat. Close our eyes when we're changing the diapers. <laughs> and then afterwards, afterwards, more great questions. So, does she remind you of anybody? She doesn't have a job. <laughs> she sleeps a lot and drinks like a fish. <laughs> Sounds like my Uncle Spike. <laughs> Teach you to ride a motorcycle, that is my Uncle Spike. <laughs> 
And then I got to the, this is one, and let me just throw this out there, okay? I did not buy any clothes for my daughter, nor did I take those clothes and put them into the drawers in her room. Now, here's the amazing part. I did not buy the clothes, nor did I put them in the drawer, yet I can go and change my daughter, pull out clothes that my wife bought out of the drawers my wife put them in, and it's always wrong. <laughs> I have yet to dress this child correctly. And then the amazing part to me is that through these kids and through all the children part is that the one time I need instructions, I don't get them. And we, we literally thought that she was a little bit sick. So we went to buy a thermometer. And let me ask you, does anybody here, I'm not gonna ask you what it is, but anybody here hate your job? Just raise your hand, I'm not gonna ask you what it is. Hate, I hate my job. Okay, okay, listen, you do not hate your job. You do not have bad enough to, I'm pulling out, with babies you gotta get a rectal thermometer, okay? I, I'm pulling this out, I'm looking on the back, and I saw the line, this is the worst job ever. It says, each thermometer has been individually tested. <laughs> Honey, I'm home. <laughs> What's wrong, baby? You look down. Yeah, they're doubling production next week. <laughs> and then there's instructions that make no sense whatsoever. No sense whatsoever. We went to, we bought a quart of firewood. It's getting a little cold. We bought a quart of firewood. It had a bright orange tag on it. I didn't even look at it until I got home. I'm picking up the garbage to throw it away. This is all it said on the bright orange tag on the firewood. Caution, warning. This product may be flammable. <laughs> if it's not, I'm taking it back, right? <laughs> I was changing the garbage. Taking it out, changing the garbage bag. Notice writing on the garbage bag. I thought, what do you write there? It's instructions on how to use the garbage bag. <laughs> Who's struggling with this? <laughs> what do we do now? <laughs> I don't know, throw some trash at it, see what happens. <laughs> Sorry, it doesn't work. My favorite though, this, this is something my wife bought a hair dryer a couple years ago and I kept this because I'm a dad and I have to have something to read in the bathroom. <laughs> it's instructions on how to use a hairdryer. Now, I don't want to be mean to anybody, but if you need instructions on how to use a hairdryer, put it down, all right? <laughs> <laughs> but I want to show you these. It's two-sided. <laughs> With pictures. I'm not going to read them all, but I'm going to read you my favorite warning and my favorite instruction. My favorite instruction, how to plug it in. The plug does not fit fully in the outlet. Reverse the plug. <laughs> it gets better. The plug just still does not fit. Contact a qualified electrician. <laughs> Yeah, I need you to come out to my house. That seems to be the problem. I, I can't plug in my hair dryer. <laughs> this is my favorite. There are 16 warnings to the use of a hair dryer. 16 warnings to the use of a hair dryer. I, ne I need you to help me here for just a minute. Number seven, I have highlighted it. There are four words. I just want you to verify that it actually says this. Never use while sleeping. You know, I'm kind of tired, but I gotta dry my hair. <laughs> oh. How'd you get that burn spot on your head? <laughs> and out of all the instructions we have, people are making life too complicated, way too complicated. I was on the Carolinas, these guys took me to lunch. They said, so what do you like to do in your spare time? So I like to play golf, they said, we're hunters. I said, that's great, I like to play golf. They said, we're duck hunters. I said, well, tell me about duck hunting. <laughs> I don't know if you're a hunter. I have nothing against hunters. Kill Bambi, I really don't care. I just don't get it. I don't understand. These guys went on to tell me. If you've never hunted, here's basically how it goes. You get up at some unbelievable hour in the morning. 
you dress like some sort of foliage. <laughs> you drive a really long time, sit in a cold, wet bush, <laughs> put out some fake ducks and blow on a whistle. <laughs> for a really long time. <laughs> Hoping something will fly by. <laughs> I said, what do you think about duck hunt? I said, I think you guys made it too hard. I said, what do you mean? I said, first I would sleep in in the morning. I'm not a morning person, but that is not why I would sleep in in the morning. The reason I would sleep in in the morning is because there's something about grown men dressed like trees wandering around in the dark with loaded guns. <laughs> that is not right. <laughs> Secondly, I would give ducks credit. We've heard ducks talk. You've heard ducks. Quack, 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 quack. I think they have conventions at some point in time. And one duck gets up and goes, hey, everybody listen. Stay away from the walking trees. <laughs> These exploding branches will mess you up. But if I was gonna take up, uh, if I was gonna take up duck hunting, I would make it simple. I would sleep in, I would dress comfortably. Here's what I would do. I would go down to the grocery store. I would buy the cheapest loaf of bread they had. I would go down to a pond where ducks are. <laughs> Sit under a shade tree. Throw out a piece of bread, wait maybe a minute. Boom, boom, boom. Shoot as many as you want. <laughs> Life is hard enough. And the times we need instructions, we don't have them. It's on my honeymoon with my wife. Why is that funny? <laughs> I have a wife. And we got married and she went with me on the honeymoon for most of it. We're sitting in the car, driving back. Have you ever been like not asleep, but not awake? That I'm driving down the road and I felt something on my arm. It was dark and she, I looked over, she was leaning against the door. So I knew it wasn't her hair and I just, it moved and I just kind of wigged out. I don't like creepy things. I'm like, ah, ah, ah. My wife said, what, what, what? She was asleep, what? I said, it was on my arm. <laughs> She said, what was on your mark? She's a little tired and a little grumpy. I said, I don't know. She said, God, chill out. God, we'll be back in a minute. Just relax. Goes back to sleep. I start driving again five minutes later. I was wearing shorts. It crawled up on my leg. I totally wigged out. She's like, what, what, what? I said, it was on my leg. She said, what was on your leg? I said, I don't know. <laughs> Has anyone ever looked at you and you can tell by the look on their face exactly what they're thinking? The woman I let just pledge my life to, her face, not her words, her face is saying, you are the biggest dork I have ever seen. <laughs> out of her mouth in anger, just chill out. We'll be back in a minute. So now I'm embarrassed. I'm like, oh, good. I'm driving. I don't care if it eats my head. I'm not going to go. I get back in that state. I heard the most blood curling scream I've ever heard in my life. My wife is over there. I look over. There's a little white spider on the side of the seat. She grabs a piece of cardboard. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? I said, flick it in the back seat. <laughs> she said, then we won't know where it is. <laughs> I said, don't flick it in the back seat. To which my wife leans over and looks at the spider. It runs down the seat, sits next to her leg. Doing 65 miles an hour in a subcompact car, my wife stands up <laughs> in the car. <laughs> Behind pressed against the window, 
begins to yell at me in a voice I have never heard come out of a woman before. Pull over! Pull over! Pull over! No. No. Honey, I can't just pull over! Pull over now! No! We have one of those disposable cameras in the back. I got it, and I went like that. She went, pull it! Pull over now! I pull into this circle, okay. I said, okay, baby, you can get out. She's like, no, you come open my door. I get out of the car, I go around. As I get to the back corner of the car, there's three dudes there with Slurpees. <laughs> looking at my wife's butt, pushed against the window. I said, there's a bug in the car. <laughs> oh, the guy said, I'm a college cheerleader, I can help you. Bless you guys, that's my time. You guys have been incredible!